All right. Uh, welcome. Oh, and I'm going to turn on live transcripts. Enable. So I've turned on live transcripts. And we are recording. So welcome to the October 12th, October 13th uh, metrics model working group meeting. The minutes and the repo and the spreadsheet are all in the uh, chat. So if you could take a look and add yourself to the list, that would be great. Just like to all let you know that Halloween candy has arrived in my house. <laughs> it will not make it to the 31st. <laughs> There's no possible way. Nope. Um, so I, I'm unable to sign in to SharePoint, so I can't. Oh, you're not. Okay, Elizabeth is not alone. Here, let me, Um, I'm going to invite you directly, Lucas. Okay. Microsoft is just miserably unable to build authentication. I uh, agree. It was a deep pathology for them. Lucas, can you drop your email in the chat really fast? I just, for whatever reason, I don't have it in my in my SharePoint thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Th thank you for adding me. Yep. For goodness sake. Give me just a second. Okay, then Lucas, you now have, I did send you a link, Lucas. So you should have ever edit privileges on this. Thank you. You bet. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen too. All right, so uh, again, welcome. <clears throat> so I just wanted to give you a few updates. I put the minutes in from last time because we haven't met for a month because last two weeks ago we were in Seattle, many of us. And so I just wanted to give you kind of an update through here. Um, there were a few to do things for us. I think partly it was just kind of organizing the work and kind of getting the repository set up and uh, getting things aligned with the um, spreadsheet. You know what I mean? We just had to kind of get all that kind of squared away. Even little things like just putting the the link to the minutes that nobody can get to in the calendar invite. Right? So little things like that. Um, I did want to just real quickly, sh and, and I think the main um, point of today that we left off last time, just so you know, is that we're going to brainstorm for new metric model ideas. I think this was Lucas's suggestion from a month ago, if I remember correctly. And I think that's a great idea. But nonetheless, I just wanted to do just a little bit of housekeeping here to kind of show you what we've got. Um, does anybody want to add anything to this agenda? I just want to go through these items a little bit, but I, the intention is to get to new metrics model brainstorming. Anybody like to add anything? Good. All right, so um, the, the repository is in the minutes, or I'm sorry, it's in the chat as well. So I actually think our readme file, I got the contributing in there and the license is all set up. Um, so I think the the readme is actually working out pretty well at this point. So if you could all just take a look at the readme, I tried to keep it fairly simple, but all the links should work. It goes out to our code of conduct. It goes out to our participate page. It goes out to our agenda that nobody can get to. It goes out to our focus areas. You know what I mean? So it's it should have everything pretty well squared away in there. I don't know if anybody's seeing anything just immediately that strikes them as odd or a bit different? Uh, I did have an action item to take a pass at that. Uh, however, I did not get to it. Okay. Uh, do, do we want the do we want our readme to share the same structure as the so we have a readme template for chaos? Yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming we want it to share that same template. Yeah, and I think this this is sort of following that. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say following it, but I'm just going to add the caveat of sort of. I'll, I'll take a I'll take a pass and see if I can uh, if it needs to be further aligned and if I can add any content. Uh, so I I will retain that action item. So. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you, Kevin. And I, it should be pretty far along at this point, so you should be pretty good if you need to add anything. Yeah, it certainly looks it looks functional now. So we're not. Oh. Uh, 
Okay, this, Lucas just pointed out that this is broken. Oh no, that that's maybe wrong. Let me double check. Okay. Just put it as an issue, Lucas, if you find one. That'd be cool. And then I just wanted to kind of further point out that uh, Yehoi had also had, he had a metrics model that he had produced and it was under the development focus area and it's called issue handling. So this should be all, the, the point being not that I really did anything, it's just this should, this should all be categorized pretty well now, just in terms of what Yehoi had done. You know what I mean? And now that we have it properly placed and that aligns with this spreadsheet, which is our metrics model templates, our metrics models, I suppose we could just call it. And this is in the development. This is in the development um, focus area, and this is issue handling right here. I went ahead and took the text that Yahui had put in the metrics model and just put it in the why you should care. I also included all of the metrics that were in there as well. So again, just trying to keep these things somewhat parallel. And then finally, just all the way over to the right side is a link to the metric itself. All right. So does anybody have a comment as to how we kind of track these metrics models? It should look and feel very similar to the way we're doing metrics. You know what I mean? A few of the columns are a little bit tiny different just because the structure of these things are a little bit different. Does anybody have a comment on that? Uh, I remember last meeting, someone uh, have comments like, shall we uh, give some scenario about our description about how to use this matrix model to show what it, what it means. But uh, uh, someone also mentioned, if I check the, the whole flow, I can imagine many of the uh, scenarios. Yeah. And yeah. I can uh, imagine a lot of use cases. So do we have to do that or? It's leave it to the different readers to think about it. So this is to your point then, this is what we have as the metrics model template. This is what you're following right now, Yuhui, in the issue handling one. Yeah. I don't think you have the resources exactly. component, but I think you have everything else. Um, so I mean, the I think what you're talking about would be potentially another subheading here, which would be like, um, <laughs> like example cases or examples of when this would be used in practice. Is that right? Yeah, uh, I, this is not my comments. This is just someone from last meeting. So I'm thinking, do we need that one? I mean, add some sub hiding as a, as a, you know, as a description or, or use stories or something like that. I don't know, what do people think, Kevin or Lucas or Elizabeth? Like adding more to what we have here? I think it might be helpful um, to, to lay that groundwork now, because okay. in the future, we may want to lump metric model, models for specific groups of people or for like a specific scenario. Like, OK, I'm starting a new open source project. What are the what are the different metrics models that I will need to look at the different pieces of my project, something like that. Like, I just feel like it might be good to start that now. Maybe it's a little more work, but that could be helpful later on. So what do you think, Elizabeth, if you were talking through that, what would be the, the subheading to include perhaps in here? Maybe just like what you said, like scenarios or um, like when when you would use that. Okay. Is that, do you think that's different than why you should care? Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's different. Okay. Uh, I think that's the, the, the difference here. The, uh, one, one of the interesting things about this template is that it actually starts with the, with the why we should care with our, with our regular metrics template, we actually start with a description and it's very uh uh very explicit what are we measuring what is it and then the next section we, we jump down to objectives and in that objectives 
area, that's basically the why we should care. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the with the metric model, we're just we're jumping straight to the why we should care, uh, because this is this really is kind of the and I, I know we don't like to use the term, but th this is the these are why we care, right? These are why we would use these metrics models. Uh, and that's the the why we would care is really the description of what the metric model is. OK. So what I hear you saying is just kind of leave it as is right here. I think so. And, and may, maybe we will need more headings at a later date. But at this time, I think we should maybe just kind of work through some of these high level headers okay. and see if we need to break it down at a later stage. Okay. And maybe when we get through maybe just even a do half a dozen of these, that's when we could revisit. I will say, Elizabeth, when we first started doing the metrics themselves, like the template that you see now is actually quite different than our original template. Um, we actually had a, like, in the original <laughs> metrics template, we actually had, like, implementation code, <laughs> like how you could actually deploy this. Like we would actually have like SQL statements. You have implementation or, code. Okay. Like SQL statements as to how, but and then we're like oh, and Python know, code and SQL that is a statements. Bad, so bad idea. Oh, <laughs> Yardy. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we did actually go back and re rework metrics as we had to. And it, I don't recall it being a ton of work just because we realized our mistake early on. <laughs> So. And, and to that point, uh, the way that Yahoi has written his why you should care does say pretty specifically when to use it. So as long as people are, you know, including that piece, I think it's helpful. So yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's good. Maybe I'll put that I can just, I'm just gonna put that in here. Explain to the reader why they should care about the metrics, this about this metrics model. Uh, this well, let me, um... Uh, bring up some thoughts on the why you should care. And um, one is that um, actionability is key to the, these things being useful. Um, and so the question of why you should care is always tied to what it is that you are trying to accomplish uh, as a result of learning this information. And that begs the question of who you are. So there's a persona. Mm -hmm. so, um, the subheads are personas and actions. Are you making a suggestion, Lucas, to add those to here? Yes. OK. So I'm having a hard time typing because I was unpacking knives and I cut my finger. <laughs> <laughs> like I just couldn't believe I did that. Okay, so personas. And then what was the other one, Lucas? I'm sorry. Uh, actions. Actions. Oops, I spelled persona. I'll blame it on my finger. Right, so like why you should care is what your goals are mm -hmm. and uh, actions are what you might do differently. Uh, and personas is, you know, who you are. What's the user context? Okay, so what you might do differently um, uh, by, like, after deploying this model, something like that? Yeah. Actually, these start to sound like um, behavior-driven development uh, statements. Yeah, they sound like user stories. Yeah, user stories. As a, as a maintainer of a new project, I want to grow the number of contributors. Okay. Is that did I capture that approximately right, Lucas? We can work on the text. That, that is great, and thank you. Okay. Um, I, I have a quick question. Uh, so. In these metrics models, we're listing all the metrics that we think go together, but we don't really talk about how to use them together. And like how, like, okay, here's this list. Am I looking at them all separately? Am I like layering them on top of each mm -hmm. other? Or like, 
does, uh, you know, burstiness, does that mean that it's going to affect my time to first response or like we don't really talk about the way they interact with each other to fit that picture. Is that on purpose? Mm -hmm. I think that has to be on purpose uh, because uh, using these models is going to be highly contextual. I don't, uh, I don't think we want to get too specific in how they fit together. I mean, even if we, even if we include, if we include six metrics in, in a model that, uh, that looks at, uh, you know, responsiveness in a pull request, not all of those, not all of the metrics that we've included may be important to the, uh, the person that's using it. They may only be interested in three of the metrics that are in the model. Uh, so I, I think we kind of need to, we still need to be a little agnostic in how we, we present these. We can just say, hey, issue responsiveness is an important, pull request issue responsiveness is uh, an important metric to consider when you are looking at overall community responsiveness or how, if the, perhaps the, the model is, the, how welcoming is your community. Lucas, Sorry, you... I went off on a couple tangents there. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, you had put your thumb up, your digital thumb. Did you have a comment on that? I, I meant to uh, thumbs up uh, Elizabeth's point on um, cross metric complications. Um, I know the conversation then went towards um, metrics needing to be um, standalone in per Kevin's point. Okay. Um, so where did we, where did we land on Elizabeth? I think, I, I'll tell you, um, my thoughts um, after that thread is that we should go and do some and see what we learn. And doing some, some what? Some uh, models. Like, let's go, let's go make up some models. And... Let's go do, let's go, <laughs> go do some models. That's, I agree. <laughs> do you think that's something that maybe like long term, we can look at exploring because I think that that's really the piece that's helpful to people. Like giving them a list is great, and that's that's like the first step. But like helping them understand how these things interact with each other and the context you can build around something, I think is like next level stuff. So maybe like in two years we can do that or something. Like I would really like to see us do that because I think that that's the hard thing that people might have struggle, you know, to figure out yeah I, I i know for our group at america that we struggle to be able to digest the entire kind of encyclopedia of metrics i just want that that on the record so that in two years when someone else has that idea i can say you know what i had that idea two years ago and here's the date <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> All right, all right. It's been noted. I, I like any action item that begins two years. From two. <laughs> You're all, all right. witnesses. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Um, cool. So why don't, uh, to Lucas's point in this meeting and Lucas's point from a month ago, um, maybe we could think about some some models. Um, do should I just make a I, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna make another SharePoint Word document because <laughs> making it and then sharing it with everybody will take the remainder of this <laughs> meeting. Um, so maybe we could all. Is everybody in this document right here? Yes, I am. Okay. Great. Yes. Okay. So maybe. Um, what if I just carved out some space in this document right here? You know what I mean? And. Um, you know, in this little box here, we can just kind of type on our own, like what, oops, sorry, oh, for heaven's sake. Um, what, I, I, I don't really know how to start this, right? So, I mean, sometimes it could just be like writing down the name of a metrics model that you think might be useful. So, for example, I think, Kevin, you had even mentioned one like, um was it welcome how, how how welcoming is your community 
Yeah. Or how welcoming is your project? And the, uh, the metrics that would be involved in that would be sentiment analysis of uh, issues uh, of comments. So it would be comment issues, it would be uh, pull request comments, it would be uh, uh, Slack channels, it would be email. So sentiment analysis would be on all of, would look no, specifically no. at those items. Uh, but then you also have issue response times, uh, pull request response times, uh, so we don't really, I don't think we have a metric around sentiment analysis or metrics at the moment. Uh, or we, I believe that there's you some, something's in the works, isn't it? The social listening the might be touch on that a little yeah. bit. Okay. Um, okay, this is good. Lucas... So maybe we could I, I could pause the recording and maybe like as an example, and you see I'm doing very coarse to coarse grain things here, like PR things, issues, and you know, I think I think um, we could um, come up with a, a tidy package for this sentiment analysis thing by just kind of name checking the social listening metric, right? Right, because like in the template, basically we're coming up with a list of relevant metrics. And I think the answer is that the social listening metric is relevant. Oh my gosh. Who knew that a band aid would cause so much trouble with typing? All right. Um, so, why don't I pause the recording and maybe, like, Elizabeth, you could try to come up with a metrics model metric, and Lucas, you could try to do the same, and Jihui, and you know what I mean? Like, everybody could maybe just kind of follow this really coarse grain approach for a metrics model, would that be okay with folks? So we'll, yes. well yeah. So is the, um, the, the next step is to go look through metrics and identify items that we think we would cite. Yeah, exactly. So you'd have kind of this top level um, metrics model that you just, I think it's something that you just, um, through your experience and through your conversations around community health, no might be a good model that people would care about. Um, and then, yes, and then it's identifying chaos metrics that could, as, as we kind of always say, like move the, the model off zero. So I don't think the chaos metrics that we have would fully articulate the metrics model, but it would help, <laughs> excuse me, it would help create some insight on that model. Okay. So I'm gonna stop my share, if that's okay with people. And I'm also gonna stop recording. If I can figure out, am I recording? Yes. Um, Matt, does it mess with your flow if I paste the social listening link in next to that? No, not at all. All right, we are back recording from a little break. And I'm going to go share my screen again. Well, it wasn't a break, but um, share my screen again. And here we are. One of the things that came up over the our short micro sprint, I like that name, was that um, we have slowly been building out metrics models. You can see I have one up here. Elizabeth has one here. Uh, the welcoming community, I think Kevin and Lucas have been working on that one together. Yahui has one here. One of the things that Lucas brought up, and I think we all have agreed on, is that when, so for example, when Elizabeth is talking about bringing in newcomers and she has a metric that is about license coverage, like maybe in first glance, it's not obvious to me why license coverage is important for bringing in newcomers, but when when Elizabeth was adding this metric to this metric model, there was a reason why she did it. And like, it's just a small one sentence story as to why you included that metric. And the point was, we should probably be capturing that small story too, around the inclusion of each one of the metrics. 
I hope I got that right. Okay, um, I agree. So maybe um, would anybody like to just, for example, tell a story about one of the metrics that they included and why they included it? It could be anything in here, like bus factor under how welcoming is your community. Like that doesn't make <laughs> like on first read that doesn't make a, a ton of sense to me, but there's a reason. So uh, I I did put bus factor in, and the uh, the reason I put bus factor in is because if a if a project has a really low bus factor, that means that the majority of the work being done is being done by one or two a, a small number of individuals, right? So if a if a small number of individuals are doing the all of the work, you do have to ask yourself the question: Would my contributions be uh, be accepted? Right? Because I'm I'm not part of that that in crowd or that small core group. Cool. Uh, Lucas, you had your hand up. <laughs> well, I was going to um, go to my. Uh, Two items on location. Um, Just going to correct all my bad. OK, where are you at? Can you uh, highlight it? The, uh, where are contributors located combined with event locations? Where are, oh, the. Uh, all right, one down, there you go. OK, gotcha. You were going to tell a story on that one? Yeah, and so I'd say that um, as a um, as a maintainer looking to grow the community, I need to know what regions um, I should support better. Cool. So I, I think it's interesting that we both kind of went to a uh, that user story uh, yeah. format for these. Uh, and I think that's kind of what Matt was asking as well. So I know we had talked about perhaps using the user stories in the uh, the why we the why we care part. But maybe uh, maybe this is where the user stories belong. Mm. Yeah. Each each metric would have a each metric would have a user story connected to it, uh, which would be a justification for why it's included in the model. And then maybe the maybe the why we care, and I. I I'm contradicting what I said before when I said that I, I thought the uh, having the, the why we care first uh, is a good thing, but uh, but maybe we maybe we do take that back and 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 do more kind of a of a high level description of what the model is rather than the the why we care at that point. Mm. I think that it may be useful in both cases. For example, um, in the um, why we care for these items, I think they all fall under the um, personas of um, a maintainer of the kind of project that wants more new contributors, uh, which is uh, not true of all, of all projects. For example, um, there are projects that only have a small group of core contributors, even though there are a lot of users, and, and that prefer it that way. Um, and, and those that second type of project would be disinterested. So um, I can imagine the why you should care would be something like, as a maintainer of a project, looking to grow the contributor base, I want to know what to focus on. 
I guess the, the problem I have with personas is that uh, a maintainer is going to have that same story as a community manager. Yeah. Uh, so a, a lot of personas can can share those same user stories. So it bec it becomes kind of a uh, like let's count how many different personas we can identify. Yeah. Uh, whereas if we if we focus on the activity, then we can say you know this activity is probably important to a number of different people. Mm. Uh, and you know what I don't I don't necessarily care who the people are that are important to it, other than maybe as a as a reference tag so that a, a community manager might come in and say, hey, I think these these models are important to me or uh, Can I make a suggestion? Yes, please. Cool. Um, we have about five minutes left and um, could could we like so here's this one whoops here's mine way way worse than all the other ones here's elizabeth's and here's kevin and lucas's could we try to kind of for the next meeting put these into this template here mm. And as you feel like you need to add, I'm totally making this up, but like a subsection called personas, or you want to add, you know, like that sub part that we were just doing, you know, how it says metric one. And then we added this other thing here, whatever that thing is, user story. Is that what we're calling this? Right? You feel free, right? So don't be feel constrained by the metrics model template o outside of the fact that it should provide some approximate guidance on, on how you might put this together so essentially just taking this work and trying to get it into into to a, a spot like this lucas do you want to do you want to collaborate on that with me in a in a google doc maybe cool. awesome definitely that would be wonderful and um can we all like as we become because Elizabeth is going to be working kind of alone. Is this okay with you, Elizabeth? To like take kind of what you've done here. And just That's try to, like okay, cool. It'd be two weeks, <laughs> or you, we could follow the two-year model as well. <laughs> but it has a two-year action item. <laughs> yeah, um, I get back to you in two years. <laughs> That's totally good. Um, I guess maybe the one thing before we wrap it up here that I'd ask is that like Elizabeth as you're putting yours together and you have kind of a way that you are feeling like you are describing your metrics model. And I have a way that I'm describing my metrics model, you know i'm including perhaps a new subheading and Lucas and Kevin. You also the same the likelihood that we're all going to land in the exact same design is zero as we all come back in two weeks. And so um, can we all just kind of promise to do this work and then when we come back like it's not a it's not a competition of like whose model is the best that we find beauty amongst all of them. <laughs> and work together. Does that work for folks. Stun silence or no. <laughs> yeah, no 100%. Okay. All right. So, so there will be a vote on which There's one is best, or straight, straight that, vote. That's that what exactly. I heard. Uh huh. That's you're, <laughs> you're like students in a class. You're like, no, that's <laughs> not what I said. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> so that would that would be great, and then we could so we could even start next week by kind of talking through. In part, it's going to be it'll be interesting because in part it'll be the metrics model itself. But in, in another part, it's actually going to be the template as to as to how we feel like we need to template these things out. And that'll be, I think, very enlightening on two fronts. All right. Nice. Cool. All right. I'm going to, we got less than a minute now, so that's good for me. I know it's almost eight o'clock, Elizabeth, your time. So 
thank you everybody for being here. This is oh. always a very productive group. I really like talking with everybody. Lucas, do you want to create the Google Doc or do you want me to? Um, I'll do it right now. Okay. And I'll, um, I'll share a link with you uh, and you'll have to request access so that I'll know the right email to use. Okay, you can share, share it with me in Slack. Uh, yes. Yeah, put it okay. in Slack. I'm gonna stop and, this meeting. And I am, open to, uh, I am open to a Zoom call if you wanna chat about it further. Okay. But, but maybe we, we can start with the doc. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Have a good Bye. night, day, whatever. Bye. Bye. See you later. <laughs>